Baldassar here. Have a fun treat today. We're here in Tampa, Florida, touring the facility where we make our wine straps that are provided and offered on teddybaldassar.com with our partners Hadley Roma. So today what we're going to be doing is going through the steps of how the wine straps are made, giving a little bit of background behind the scenes of how this all happens. And then in addition to that, take a look at the different materials, the manufacturing process, and how this all happens. So guys, let's head inside. Check it out. Greg. Hey, Teddy. How are we doing? Good. All right, guys, we're here inside Hadley Roma with Greg. Greg, you're the general manager here, correct? I have your right title? Yes, sir. So could you give us a little backstory about Hadley Roma, just the history and, you know, well, what we're going to Hadley, be seeing? Hadley Roma has been around for about 108 years. We manufacture and distribute to watch companies and watch retailers and online sellers like yourself. What, what makes the Hadley Roma strap? What makes it kind of special? What do you, what kind of goes into well, it? Well, the, the whole thing is, you know, they're made here in the U.S. We are the last U.S. manufacturer. Yeah, and that was important for me to have, you know, U.S. made products, exactly. having that ability to have some flexibility and speak with somebody here in the United States, right. which is great. Right, when you came to us a year and a half ago, we developed a line for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were able to select from a wide variety of bands select a group of bands that really meet your customers' needs. You got on the wrist there. Looks like we got a Seamaster. He, he came prepared today, guys, yeah. so that's great. With a Hadley Roman Alligator Band. Awesome. Well, yeah. hey, let's go see how they're actually made. Yeah. Let's head back, guys. All right. All right, guys, we're here on the factory floor. I'm here with Greta. You lead all the operations here making the straps, correct? And you've been yes. here for how long? Uh, over 30 years. All right, so we're in good hands today. So <laughs> could you kind of just go through? I know we can't go through all the steps today, but this just the general steps and kind of how these straps are made. I know we're looking at kind of some more raw materials here. And Basically, White Straps has more than 15 departments. The first thing we have to do is the cutting. So this is the difference with leather. We cut like this and with alligator, lizard, or any other uh, reptile, we cut it into uh, individual is pieces. Is that because of the texture on the actual surface? Okay, you have to see, it, it has different yep. different grains and stuff. So sometimes you have round and sometimes you have square. And so what we have to do is, we have to match this. And basically what we do on this machine, we split the material down to the correct weight. This, my paper tells me that I need 85 on the top and 90 on the bottom. So then I come here with my material and I split it. So I turn my machine on and I put it through here and it goes through here and I split it to the length that I want. Then I measure it here. This is the skiving where I come to the machine and I skive it. This is skiving. I do a top sky. So I did my first skive. Now I have to come and do my back sky and sky my lining. Miss Irene, I need you. I need you to sew this for me, please. So this is, you're stitching together the, the, the cap yes. skin with the, 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 the leather with the, material? Yes. And then this is gonna go into gluing? Yes. So then it comes to this table. We used to do this by machine, but since we downsized, we do it by hand. So I'm going a little bit over where this is gonna turn and meet this side. Mm -hmm. So I'm gluing this part right here that needs to stick together. Just quick dry it, <laughs> then I come back and I close it. Um, usually I just take this here and I push it, not too tight, and there's my line. So explain again what exactly this uh, this is for people that are watching. So remember I told you before I have two, I have a point and a buckle. Mm -hmm. This is the point, this is the top material, and this is the lining. So we just saw where the lining was attached to the top material. Now you just you just watch me close it, I glued it, Got it, and now it's attached. The two pieces are together. And so this is my point, which is gonna be like this. Yep. With my fold, it's gonna fold here. Then this is my buckle. On the buckle, it's a little different because you have more work to do. What she's gonna do now, she's gonna trim the lining and she's gonna trim the top material to make sure that it's the right length. And then I can come here, I do my buckle fold, and then this closes like this. And this is what it looks like after it's been put together. Sit this on is the, the gluing machine right here? This is the gluing machine. Okay. So what she does is she comes here, she lays this out. Then she tapes it because this gets a dry spot, so she, she applies the tape to it. What is the tape allowing you to see there? Is that just for a guide? The tape is here because this is where the, um, the push pin is going to go in got and the it. top of the strap to attach it to the watch. Mm -hmm. 
So we have to have a, a part that's, that we can open. Got it. So, it is, so then after we, after we get it put on the board, it comes to this machine and we try to spray it even so it doesn't have any clumps. How long did that have to dry for? Um, usually, usually she turns the fan on. It okay. takes about 10, 15 minutes. So remember the dry spot where I showed you where the tape is? Yes. Ah, so this tape comes off. So th this spot is dry, so I have my opening, mm -hmm. okay? What we do is sometimes the material still can be weak at this spot. We put in what we call a stiffener and it makes it harder. So that's gonna be where the spring bar is going to sit. Yes, this is where the spring bar is gonna sit. And we put a stiffener here and this dries hard, so it, it's, we still have an opening. Got it. So this is all applied by hand? Yes. Wow. <laughs> So after, it, after it's sprayed and it's dried, the stiffener is applied, then we come and we cut it. Okay. Okay. So then it comes to this machine and he puts it on, he puts it on here like this. So this order is 16 by 16. So I need a size 21. This would be for my single pieces. This would be for my double pieces. He put it on the top of the material and then he cuts it. So then I get my individual pieces. There you go. And there's different molds for every different size. Yes. Yeah. So this is a, a 16. If I do a 17 or 18, I go up a size, I use a 22. And I do the same thing. I How old it. are the machines in here that we're using? Oh, they're older than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I started, I started working here in 1987. Wow. Are you still using the same machine since back then? And this is the same machine. Wow. How many times have you done this in your life? What, this, yeah, this part? Yeah. Um, I do this every once in a while. Uh, okay. When somebody is out, yeah. I have to feel their place. Got it. I don't like to do this, but I have to know <laughs> what I'm doing, so yes. And the reason why we cut it like this with, the, with this guide is mm -hmm. because when we fold it, this gets folded. Uh, it gets folded under it, so you when, lose it. So you want to have this, this needs to be straight. So I Got want it. to make sure this, this is straight. Got it. After I uh, cut it, mm -hmm. let's go to the next step. All righty, lots of steps. Oh yes. Do you need me to bring this with you? No, 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 you can keep, leave it there. Keep it there, okay. You can leave that there. Now I'm going to show you um, the fill apart. So we transition order. to calfskin here instead of alligator. Yes, this is calfskin because I already have it prepared. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm going to show you what we do with the, uh, how we cut the filler. So this is the material for these two orders. What is this material? Because I think everybody hears about padding, but what actually is it when, um, you, hear, when you see that? The bottom, the top part is uh, what we call white felt, mm -hmm. and the bottom part is uh, Zella. Okay. And so on my cutting order, it tells me the weight of the strap. Um, sometimes it's just one piece, sometimes it's two pieces. So this machine is where I come and I cut my padding, and I put it in and I cut my padding. So this is adding the padding to the strap? This is adding the padding to the strap. This is all done by hand? Done by hand. Each one? Yes, sir. Wow. Now she's taking a bar. To replicate the spring bar. Yes. And these, these steps, how long have they been in, they've been in place? The same since you've been here? Since I started. Is these there any difference him. in the process when you're dealing with a different leather material, how you apply the padding, how you press it or anything? No. It's, it's, the it's same? still the same. Okay. After we pad it, it comes to this machine. These are different lengths, different sizes, but we can adjust it and we roll it. That's just to reinforce the padding, the glue, everything? To help hold it in place yeah. until we chop it. Got it. Same for the buckle. It goes through here also. And after, after it's padded and put together, then it comes to chopping. Okay. I have to come here. We have templates that we use for different sizes. This one is 12 by 12, so this is this is the template that I'm going to use for this strap. I have a point die and I have a buckle die that I have to chop this on. Okay, so this is it for the point. I put this in, I set it up to the length that I need, I put it in this machine, and I chop it. And that's my strap. And here's my buckle. Okay, and that's the chopping. Step six is two departments. We have a beveling department and we have a creasing department. The bevel department, we put it on a, a machine where we smooth the sides to get it ready for painting. So what we do here, if you notice, the sides are not really clean. So what I'm gonna do on this machine, I'm gonna clean it up. This is really loud. So I come here, I clean up my edges to make them smooth. Hey, you okay. notice that difference? There you go, look at that. 
Looking good. So this is what I'm gonna use to crease this strap. So then I come to my machine, I put my base on, then I'm gonna do my buckle first. So I put it in the machine. So I have to change dies, then I crease my point. So what's the point of actually creasing? Why, why do you do this? Well, the, the creasing, it gives it an edge. It gives shape to the strap. We crease it basically for two reasons. You close up the edge where I beveled it. Mm -hmm. Now it's thinner. It, you, we close this up yep. and also it gives a guideline for when I need to stitch it. Ah, there you go. Okay. Okay, so we went through creasing. Mm -hmm. Now, if we take a look at the painting and just for that next step here? Yes. Okay. Yes. So what are we looking so, at over here? So painting, um, usually we paint on the table and when we paint on the table, we do one side, mm -hmm. we flip it and do the other side. But this particular strap we are painting on the table and the difference between painting on the, on the rack and painting on the table is that she can paint both sides at one time. Got it. So for people that don't know this paint, when they're applying it, what does it help the strap do? Because the edge is raw, mm -hmm. there's no color on the edge. Mm -hmm. So now she's adding the color to the edge to match the strap. Got it. Um, so what, what she normally does, she get the matching thread for the strap that she's going to sew. Mm -hmm. Then she has to know how many stitches per inch and she sets her machine for it. So now what she's doing, she's either tightening it or untightening it so that she will get the right consistency on the, on the bottom or the top of the thread. Now she's making that turn. And then she's gonna put her guide back in place. And now to finish it off. After it's sewn, it has to be trimmed. Then it goes back to creasing where it gets a second crease to lay down the stitching. This just smooths it back out and makes it look better. So this, this is what I've been telling you about the looping. This is a genuine leather. And so she glues it, put a loop back in. Then she's gonna glue her loop to hold it in place. After, after she puts the loop on just what you just saw, this is what she's doing here. She has a floating loop and she has a fixed loop. She puts it on and she presses it. After she finishes, she finishes that, it gets marked where we go back and we hand stitch it. So, so that top hand stitching, that's always done by hand right there? This is done by hand, Got it. also by hand. It's inspected, clean, and then if it gets a buckle, then we put the buckle on. Or if it gets a speed pin, we put a speed pin in and that's, that's basically it. Wow. Okay, so we went through the stitching, went through the painting, now for the stamping. So we have a Pan Hermes leather strap, one of my favorites that we have on our site. So what, are, what exactly are you doing here? So you're, you okay, um, to stamp the point, you have to put it in a certain way in the die. So when I look at it, I want it to be backwards. So when I put the teddy in, my T should be over here. When I put it in the die, it's gonna flip upside down. Got it. So then it, it will be in the right place. There's my teddy. Regretta, thank you so much for going through all this. Really appreciate it. A lot of stuff. We didn't get to see all of them. No. No, but no. we saw a good amount, so I really okay. appreciate it. All right. Okay, no problem. All right, guys, so we're back with Greg, and we have some raw materials to look at. So, Greg, I think a lot of times when people are looking at different leather goods in general, there's people that I don't think just know what they're looking at. What's a good material? What's a bad material? How do we get here? Right. So, could you maybe give us a little bit of background on what we have on the table, and then also just kind of the, you see behind us here, the yeah. amount of material that we yeah. have. You know? Yeah, this is our leather room, material room, and uh, there's hundreds of thousands of square foot of leathers, and there's also probably tens of thousands of skins that we have here, which are exotics. And we're gonna go over some of the exotics today and the differences. Big item in the industry is genuine crocodile. This happens to be a crocodile side, mm -hmm. and we have it in burgundy, brown, and black. Now, this material would be of nature sitting on the side of the animal here okay and then his belly's here uh, all of them are tagged and these are legit this one probably comes out of Colombia it's on the endangered species list actually off the endangered species list but has to go through CITES got it, got it. to be shipped from country to country in 1987 the American alligator started becoming where it wasn't endangered it was still on the endangered species list, but it was now recovering. And then in 1998, January 1st, it came off of the endangered species list. Once it came off the endangered species list, that's when American alligator became the go-to piece. Now, here's an American alligator. We can use the belly on the alligator. 
On a crocodile, you cannot use the belly. The problem with the crocodile is the belly, the bone plates, which are these crocs, mm -hmm. the bone plate, when you fillet it, it's too thin and it breaks. So you can never use the belly section of a crocodile. And with an alligator, you get more of these square type textures. Right, you get the square, like my, my watch. And it has to be small, mm -hmm. so it shows up on the watch strap. And, uh, and, and, and appearance-wise, it's the most beautiful, is this section in here. This, this here is your filet mignon, mm -hmm. all right? This is your prime rib down okay. here. Okay, yeah. And this is your sirloin. Got it. All right? <laughs> This is the most expensive part. Got it. Um, Outside of the aesthetics, I mean, is there anything that somebody should consider when looking at a crocodile versus alligator? Like, is anything else? Well, it, it's just aesthetics. Yeah. I mean, this is the side, which would be like the sirloin over yep. here. Yep. Um, this doesn't have as much of a Bombay. Bombay is how it bubbles up. Mm -hmm. uh, this has a very nice Bombay to it, where the crocodile is more of a flatter surface. It doesn't have the Bombay. Now, another thing that came out in the market now is alligator grain. For people that don't know the difference, right. I mean, just maybe give them a quick rundown. This is leather, yep. and it's printed. Yep. And um, a pressing process right, to do that. right. They take the leather hide and they just press it. And they're trying to emulate the center section. Actually, it'd be better with this one. It, it's trying to emulate the look. Mm -hmm. So this is an alligator grain. This happens to be from Italy. It's Italians. The Italians spent tons of money on these plates, and they make the most beautiful grains in the world. So I, there's some really bad grains, and there's also right. some good ones. Right. How could, what are some maybe some tips for somebody that's looking at alligator grains? It's a great way to get into the alligator look at a more affordable price. Exactly. This this is a, a tenth yeah. of the cost of this. What, I mean, would you, what would you maybe suggest? Is there ways to kind of indicate if it's a good versus bad if they're handling it? Or? Well, they buy Hadley Roma. It's a good one. <laughs> Uh, That's the, a safe the, bet, yeah, huh? yeah. Um, the Italian alligator grain is the best, mm -hmm. uh, and and that's what we use when we go to grains. For other exotics, so we looked at alligator, we looked at yeah. crocodile. There's other. Uh, the other one that's very popular uh, is the lizard skins. The ladies really like the Java lizard. A lot of uh, Cartier, a lot of uh, yep. Michelle, they use the Java lizard. Mm -hmm. Now this animal used to run around, this is called a front cut Java, and he used to run around, this was his belly, this was his back. So you used the back. We're using the back, right. That nice round pebbly grain is the primo for this skin. Now there's another animal called a Teju. I, look, I love the look of these. Yeah, great. the Teju is your 1970s, yeah. uh, 80s. It's classic. This, yeah, it's classic. Mm -hmm. uh, Seiko used to use, we used to run 5,000 of these through the factory at once, in one size. Wow. Yeah, uh, now this animal here used to be belly back. Now this is a back cut. This is a front cut, this is a back cut because the belly mm -hmm. on this is the beautiful part. Yep. That tile is outstanding. Here's an ostrich skin, which a lot of people don't really get to view very often. Ostrich is very beautiful, very soft, supple. Wow, the material, okay. Yeah, you can feel it. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, the only problem with ostrich is everybody wants the quills. Well, as you can see, only about 50% of this skin has quills. So where is this on the actual, like the body? I'm trying to figure out where the... Uh... This would have been the back side. This, this the back is side. the belly side. Got it, yeah, got it. Belly side, yeah. How long have you been working here, Greg? Uh, 93, so 27 years. I, I give it away, I was born in 93, so... Oh. You know, they... <laughs> <laughs> but that comes with experience and wisdom. So when somebody's looking to buy a watch strap now, I mean, outside of saying just go have the Roma, like, you know, what would, right. you, what would you suggest? Are there any other indicators for well, things to look out for? Like what makes a good strap, what makes a bad strap? Well, the construction of the strap is one element. Mm -hmm. uh, what you're seeing here at Hadley Roma is a construction that's very clean. It's made classic. Um, a cut edge strap 
cut painted edge strap is the best strap made in the world, okay? There are some materials require a fully turned edge, like our Cordura band that you carry. Yep. That's a fabric, so it has to be fully turned and then the lining's brought up to it, all right? That's a good good construction, well-made strap. The Rembord A strap where the, is where the Chinese did, is they went over the edge and then they fillet it. Mm -hmm. That's the worst. Your Rolex, PJ, AP, uh, all your top notch, Cartier, all those big names mm -hmm. are all using cut painted edge. That's what we do here. That's what our factories do overseas also. All right, guys, it's been a pretty full day. I want to thank you, Greg, again for having us. It was great to see behind the scenes a little bit more. I know people probably enjoyed it. We couldn't be happier with just the straps that we're offering, the process and working with you. It's been fantastic. So thanks again. It's a pleasure having you. Uh, thanks for choosing us. Of course. Uh, having you as a customer, we appreciate that. And I hope your, your customers appreciate our fine bands. Oh, I know they do. Yeah. Best straps you can get out there, guys. So head over to TeddyBallStore.com. If you did like the video, thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon. I'm gonna go catch a flight. See you guys later.